Welcome to the third installment of Phoenix Masonry Live's Masonic Artifact Series. I am Frederick L. Milliken, Executive Director of Phoenix Masonry. And I am Elena Llamas, Director of Public Relations for Phoenix Masonry. Now, Masonic artifacts do not have to be old to be collection and museum worthy. Today, we are going to show you, as our artifact of the month, a three part video series on Jim Macbeth's beautifully handcrafted Masonic knives. Frederick was able to visit Jim at his home in Bernie, Texas and film these wonderful videos. Make sure to catch all three of them on our social media and YouTube channel. Hello folks, I'm here with Jim Macbeth, uh, Macbeth Knives, and we're here to explore the craftsmanship that goes into making knives, a lot of them Masonic knives. Jim, good to see you. Glad to meet you finally too, uh, Fred. Uh, we've done a lot of com communicating over the, over the internet and whatnot, but glad you could come down and visit with us. Oh, uh, it's great. And uh, you are past master? I'm past master of Plano 768. In Texas, okay. Texas, yeah. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get behind the camera because okay. this is your show, not my show. <laughs> okay. okay. Very good. Okay, Jim, sit down and uh, let's start off with... Uh, what are we starting off with? The well, I just a little bit of background on me. I, yeah. I about, uh, I guess it's three or four years ago, uh, son-in-law asked me one day if I uh, had given any thought maybe what I wanted to kind of do as a hobby and wondered if I'd think about uh, making some knives. I said, well, shoot, uh, yeah, I'll take a look at it. Well, uh, I looked into buying a forge and doing all the metallurgy and uh, that sort of stuff and Fred, it was just way too much work. Uh, I was retiring. I wanted a hobby. I didn't want another job. So <laughs> I decided to see if I could find some knives that some of the knife makers had already made. And so I did. And we were able to uh, get some uh, what we call knife blanks. And uh, I fashioned all the handles, the pins, and so forth. And we're going to be looking at some of that in a little bit. Uh, but just as a, an idea, I had to learn a little bit about steel. And of course, steel is a makeup of iron and then some alloys that are added like, uh, for, for example, chromium, uh, uh, molybdenum, nickel, that sort of thing. So I had to learn a little bit about that and I found some uh, manufacturers of knife blanks that uh, had good steel, good quality. And so we began buying uh, two or three different ones to see if I was going to like doing this and really wanted to spend some time doing it. And sure enough, uh, it's been a big... Uh, Big, a lot of fun for me, and certainly a lot of time to to enjoy the actual process of doing this. And in a sense, for the last three years, Fred, we have we've had just through communications with other brothers around the state, around the country, as a matter of fact, uh, have bought a lot of my knives. So it's it's been a real real joy. Uh, one of the things that I think you also wanted to to look at was, for example, some of the wood that we use. And I've got a couple of examples of that. If you can. Kind of zoom in on some of this. This is a sample of some of the wood that we use. This is all what we call exotic wood, uh, meaning that it's uh, not common elm or, or oak and that sort of stuff. This is more like uh, something called bloodwood, bacote wood, paduac, something called bubinga, uh, wingay, which is a very dark wood. Well, all these come from various parts of South and Central America. Some we even get from North Africa. Uh, that's only uh, grows those trees grow in those parts of the country in the world. So we found some different manufacturers uh, and purveyors of the wood that uh, had once they bought the lumber, then they would make these these wood blanks. And so that was just one shot that I showed. Here's another one. If you can see some of this, mm -hmm. Fred. Uh, one of the things that. Um, were interesting to look at was some of these are hard to get now. One in particular is called Coco Bolo, and it's become uh, very uh, almost extinct in some places, certainly on the endangered list. Uh, and the prices have gone sky high to get knife, uh, what we call scales uh, in the trade. These are just uh, three or two and a half inches by five inches. Uh, and those are called scales. It's really the handles and wood. You can see here's another one. There's Bacote wood, um, something called Black Limba. 
uh, red heart. Uh, some of these have a very much uh, a red tone, a deep red tone too. Here's one of the ones that I told you that was getting very uh, uh, hard to get and come by. It's Coca Cola Rosewood. So at any rate, we found some people online that we could buy these uh, woods from, and we developed good relationships between several of them, and uh, so we continue to buy from those guys. Uh, and these are these are the woods you make the handles of the knife. Yeah, these are the ones we make our handles out of. Right. Um, then the next ones we had the knife made. We decided, well, uh, people are not going to want to carry a knife without a sheath. And so I started looking around at someone to make sh uh, a sheath for me. I found somebody here in Bernie. Uh, he's a saddle maker, and he just frankly didn't really have the time to do the ones that I kind of wanted to do. We bought a few from him, and then I accidentally ran across a, a husband and wife team in Mississippi uh, that... Uh, uh, had some knives on the internet that I really, really liked, and so I got to know them and order, started ordering uh, sheaths from them. And in order to, for them to make a sheath, they needed what we call tracings. So I, uh, once I get a knife blank, uh, here's another example of one. Uh, if you can see that, I have to give the overall dimension of it, uh, how actual wide the the, uh, what the length of the blade itself is, what the length of the handle is, how wide is the handle, how wide is the actual blade uh, at these various points. And so this is what they need uh, in order to, uh, for example, there's the, the buoy trace, the, or our buoy knife that we use. Um, they have to have these kind of dimensions since they're, they're not anywhere local. Don't send the knife to them, and they make the sheaths for them. And uh, they make, they're excellent craftspeople, uh, they're terrific leather workers. Uh, they use top quality leather, and so all the customers that we've sold knives to uh, really like the products that they have. So here's some that you'd ask me for kind of uh, special sort of orders, maybe that uh, that we've done in the past. Uh, this was called, if you can see this one, uh, this is what I call my Scottish Rite knife. Uh, this represents the 18th degree. And uh, Scottish Rite Masonry, we had a, a, a an emblem actually cra uh, manufactured for it, uh, and then our sheath makers actually put the Rose Croix sheath you can see uh, on on that and hand hand crafted into the sheath itself. Uh, and we have several brothers who who brought who bought those. This was a brother too that's in South Texas. Uh, he, he buys some for his workers on the ranch, and uh, he buys in bulk from me, so I, I uh, have to make sure I get these ready for him, and he gives me plenty of time to get them ready. He gives these as gifts. He has their initials put in the handles, has their initials put on the sheath, and so forth. Um, one of the ones that uh, was kind of a unique one was this one. We had a brother, I think, out in California who uh, had... Uh, something called a Billiken uh, emblem that he wanted, he was giving this as a gift uh, to the Royal Order of Jesters in the shrine and he wanted this pen emblazoned on the rear, rear side of the other knife. Now on the other flip side he's got the square and compass but it was an unusual request and we were able to to do that for him. Uh, this is a special one I like to, to highlight too is this is a real Texas Ranger badge that was uh, made into a concho that we donated a, a big uh, buoy knife to the Texas Ranger Foundation, former Texas Ranger Foundation, and uh, so they auctioned that off for their benefit of their foundation. So we, we did that back a couple of years ago, and we enjoyed doing that for them. Uh, another big buoy that we gave as a gift uh, that was being uh, auctioned off for another benefit special benefit. Uh, we had a brother ask us to put together a presentation box in presentation of, uh, to our past Grand Master. And uh, we found a box and had it uh, very nicely uh, done in the year of his coin and so forth. So that was a nice uh, uh, opportunity for us to do a little extra, little extra uh, for that brother. Uh, here's where this brother in Texas, uh, he wanted he wanted some buffaloes, 
uh, concho. So we were able to find some buffalo conchos for his, and so we had those made. Uh, another one for him as well we did later. This was where he wanted something both from a hunting and a fishing. These are all fillet knives down here. Uh, I'll have one out we'll look at in a little bit, uh, Brother Fred, uh, and I'll show you what one of those looks like. This was kind of unusual too. Here's a brother from up north who is in the oyster shucking business. I guess he's an oyster hunter. <laughs> and he sent me a knife and said, can you make a handle for this and put a past master emblem in it for me and have a sheath made? And I said, yeah, we'll try doing that for you. And so he's very, very happy with that. Uh, that was another special order. And I guess the last one I'll show you was this one was from a deputy U.S. Marshal in Arkansas, Lady, Lady Marshal. And she was, uh, knows one of my nieces over there. And uh, my niece put her in touch with me and she said, I'd really like a knife and I'd like a, 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 a badge, uh, or at least a concho with a deputy badge on it. And I, I found one uh, that was able to craft for her. And so this was another special thing we enjoyed making and pre presenting to her. She's, she's very happy with this knife. Actually, she's bought some other knives from me. So this just gives you an idea of some of the ones we've done. Um, I guess to look at some examples of the knives themselves. Yeah, the actual knives here now. Uh, here's one that uh, we have. It's, it's non-Masonic. Happens to be, uh, we've had a lot of friends of Masons that would call and say, hey, can, can you make one without the Masonic in? And I said, of course. Uh, this is, has a little Texas concho on it. And this, this sheath and, of course, the, the knife is a nice looking knife. And again, the, the handle on it is a uh, one of our exotic exotic woods. Very very nice, very uh, stained, detailed, grained uh, is one. Another big one is uh, this one. And this is getting become a pretty much uh, very favorite this year. It had this uh, hammered look, if you will, if you can see that. Uh, and of course we've got the Masonic uh, emblem in the handle and then the square compass uh, on the on the sheath, so uh, that's a popular uh, model, by the way, too. And one you found a while ago that you kind of liked was this little thing here. I think I call it the chipmunk, and it's a little small knife. You can see I put a uh, square compass emblem on it, and it also has this hammered look here. If you can see that, are you getting that? Okay, good. And then I, I found a little sheath for it. They they sent me a little sheath. Doesn't have a concho on it, but it, uh, it sure shows up really good too. It's very black and it goes good with the handle. Uh, so we just married those two together. Now there's a special, uh, I think you ran across one, uh, of steel that's a little bit different and some of the brothers like the, the, what they call the Damascus steel. And if you look at that, you can see the various patterns in this. Uh, Damascus steel is a combination of what they call 1095 steel and then there's another steel that they fold and, and, and put together and, and weld and fold it. It's called a 15N20 steel. It's an alloy steel they put in there. And it has some nickel in it, which when they etch the, the steel, after they've welded and folded it numerous times, uh, they'll etch it and it shows up to all the beautiful pattern you can see in it. And there's, there's, I don't know, four, five, six different types of patterns. One's called rainbow raindrop, ladder, some of the others. Uh, but they make a beautiful, beautiful knife. Very sharp, by the way. And I guess the last one is another Damascus knife. And again, you can see the, uh, the different patterning. In, and there's no two of these alike. No matter what the pattern is, there's no two of them alike. And again, the, the, etching, set, uh, the etch, etching process that the knife maker actually does brings out the uh, uh, shine on that knife. This also has, if you can see the detail on it, it's got what they call file work. File work. Uh, the knife maker, when he made this, spent a lot of time doing the filing on that to it on the top part of that. Uh, and it's a beautiful knife. It's uh, sort of etched on the. On this, well, they actually. No, on the a, top part. The top, no, they actually take a file and file the steel. Uh, to make all the pattern that you can it's see. It's a pattern, pattern on there. It's though. a pattern, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a process they go through and they just repeat the pattern. They love it. It's got a just really pretty, pretty touch to it. 
Actually, I made this one for me. It's reason it's still here. <laughs> I had soaked that, and so. Uh, but it's again, uh, and all these sheaths, of course, have belt loops on them. So uh, those are just some of the knives that I still that still have available, uh, except for except for that one. That's that's mine. But uh, we're really down in our inventory. Uh, we've we uh, uh, got really busy and had some sales, and and so we kind of. Taking taking a time now to uh, sit back a little bit. We had a lot. We also have a part of our other work. We we teach real estate uh, at the local uh, board of uh, real estate board, and so we we have to split our time between some things. And actually, Fred, we're still retired, you know. So <laughs> we have to spend a little time retiring, right? Right. So this this is like part one of the videos we're going to do. We're going to go out to the shop in a minute and now we're going to see how the process is actually done.